Welcome to CN Jenkins. We have the distinct pleasure today celebrating Women's Day. Celebrate the gifts of Women's Sunday here at CN Jenkins. We have the pleasure of hearing a powerful word from the Reverend Maria Crumpton from Elmwood Presbyterian Church in New Jersey. Will you pray with me? God, we thank you so much for this preaching moment. We thank you, oh God, for this moment where we get to hear from you. God, I'm asking that you take these words on an iPad and, and make them enough. Take these words, oh God, and give them transforming power. Touch this waiting congregation. Speak to me, speak through me. And if I'm not getting it, God, speak for me. Have your way in this place. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. As we celebrate the gifts of women this morning, I want you to pray with me on the theme, we're coming up from behind. We're coming up from behind. During the late 19th century and early 20th century, as blacks in this country were fighting for racial equality, white women were simultaneously fighting for gender equality, and both of these movements were fighting for a chance in the spotlight. Members of each movement believed that the other would divert attention away from their cause. So all attempts were made by both movements to keep these two issues separate. As you would imagine, this placed black women in a precarious predicament. Even though the black movement addressed issues of race, the male leaders still held their sexist attitudes towards women. And even though the women's rights movement addressed issues of gender, the white women leaders still held their racist attitudes towards black. So not only did black women not fully fit into either of these movements, but it seemed like everywhere she turned, the black woman was being told to get behind. In 1851, a women's rights convention was held in Akron, Ohio, to discuss the possibility of giving women equal rights. Present at this convention were prominent male leaders, white women who organized the women's rights groups, and one former slave by the name of Isabella Baumfree. We know her best as Sojourner Truth. Now for the entire convention, Sojourner Truth sat in the back of the room, quietly observing, quietly listening to all the arguments being made as to why women should not have the same rights as men. And just as they were preparing to bring the convention to a close, Sojourner Truth stood up in the back of the room and she started to walk down the aisle. As she moved forward, some women in the crowd yelled out, don't let her speak. You see, the last thing they wanted was for this tall, dark, black, uneducated woman to speak at their convention. They did not want the male leaders to think that she was speaking on their behalf. So all attempts were made to try to get her back to her seat. 
But as Sojourner Truth pressed her way to the front of the room, some women tried to physically push her. But despite their attempts, Sojourner Truth boldly pushed her way to the front of the room because she, along with other black women, were sick and tired of being behind. As she stood in front of the crowd that day, legend has it that she bore one breast and a muscular arm as proof that she and other black women were just as feminine as white women, yet as strong and as capable as any man. Sojourner Truth raised the question that has become the black woman's motto, ain't I a woman? See in Jenkins, I am so godly grateful to be here to celebrate the gifts of women with you and the Presbyterian women. But if the truth be told, the gifts of women have not always been celebrated. They have not always been validated. They haven't always been appreciated. For years, women were told that our place was behind. But today, somebody type in the chat, today. Go ahead and text two people, today. With a black woman vice president named Kamala and a Supreme Court justice named Kentaji, we can celebrate because we are coming up from behind. This, this, this idea of women coming up from behind is what brings us to our text this morning. Like Sojourner Truth, like so many of us, we encounter in this text a woman who was told that her place was behind. As I examined the text, I was able to identify three reasons that contributed to this woman being behind. And, and if you don't mind, I, I want to list all three this morning because the same reasons this woman was behind is some of the same reasons why we often find ourselves behind in life. First, 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 this woman was behind because of her position. Verse 25 opens with these three words, and a woman, full stop. These three words tell us everything we need to know about her position in life. As a woman living in first century Palestine, her position was understood. Women were significantly lower than men and only slightly higher than slaves. Women were not allowed to hold positions of authority. They were not allowed to speak in public. They were not allowed to look a man in the eye. They were not allowed to even leave their homes without the permission of their fathers or husbands. This woman was born into a society that relegated her to a diminished position where her gifts were not celebrated, her contributions not appreciated, and her life was not validated. Instead, she was denied, dismissed, disregarded, and overlooked. Black women, we know a little something about that, don't we? Well, we know something about being relegated to a diminished position. We, we know what it feels like to not have our gifts celebrated, our contributions appreciated, our lives validated. We know something about being denied, dismissed, disregarded, and overlooked. We, 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 we celebrate having a black woman vice president now. But for years, the contributions of, that black women have made to politics, particularly the ways in which black women have shown up for the Democratic Party, have been constantly and consistently overlooked. In the 2020 election, black women proved to be the Democratic Party's most powerful voting group. Did you hear me? Not only did 91% of black women vote for now President Joe Biden, but black women were also the driving force behind the election. Women like Stacey Abrams, Latasha Brown, and so many others who were on the front lines using their gifts, working to ensure that every eligible voter was registered and could have their verses heard at the polls. Yeah. 
black women, black women have proven time and time again that we are the backbone of democracy. We have we have not always received the recognition and, and the credit that we deserve, but today we celebrate the gifts of women and we declare we're coming up from behind. The political arena is not the only area of society where women's positions have been relegated. Even in the church, the gifts of women have not always been celebrated and our contributions to the church have not always been appreciated. It is no secret that many great churches have been led by men, but they've been built by the women. Women have always been and continue to be the backbone of the church. Even when we were not allowed to lead or, or hold positions of leadership and even when, they weren't even, even when they weren't recognized for their work in the church, women still gave their all to the ministry of the church. One day, one day, one of the seniors in my congregation said to me, she said, Pastor Maria, when I was growing up, we didn't have women preachers. Back then, people just didn't believe that a woman should preach. She said, but I'm so glad that times have changed because if women were still not allowed to preach, we wouldn't have you and we wouldn't have your gift. Her comment touched me because I know that, that, that as I live out my gift and as I stand here today, I am standing on the shoulders of a long line of women who have come before me. Women who operated in their gift, whether their gift was celebrated or not, appreciated or not, affirmed or not, they still gave their all to the church. And so today I, I celebrate the gifts of women preachers like Jarena Lee and Maria Stewart, Julia Foote and Sojourner Truth, Renita Weems and Katie Cannon. Today we celebrate the gifts of women like my grandmother and my great grandmother, women whose names we will never know, but whose contributions to the church have built the foundation that allows me to stand before you today. Women who were not allowed to preach and lead, but they still use their gifts to serve as deaconesses and missionaries and Sunday school teachers and choir directors and cooks. And whenever the church roof needed to be repaired, guess who would show up? It would be the women. The women would show up. The, the women would fry the chicken and make the potato salad and, and the macaroni and cheese. And they would put this together, package these chicken dinners, and they would sell them so that the church can live another day. Today, we celebrate the gifts of women who for years kept the church going. Women have always been the backbone of the church and today we are coming up from behind. Politics and the church are not the only places where women's positions have been relegated and where our gifts have not always been celebrated. Even in history, the contributions of women are too often minimized and frequently overlooked. During the civil rights movement, women like Ella Baker and Fannie Lou Hamer risked their lives and worked tirelessly to end segregation, but their work and their contributions are often overshadowed by Dr. King and other male leaders. We have all heard of the Montgomery bus boycott, but what we haven't always heard is that it was the women who kept that movement going. The women arranged carpools and organized alternate transportation. The women baked cakes and sold pies to raise money for the boycott. It was the gifts of women that kept that movement going. 
Today, we celebrate the gifts of women who persevered despite their relegated positions in politics, in the church, and in history. We celebrate the women who refused to allow their position to keep them behind. We celebrate the women who decided no one is going to hold me back. We're coming up from behind. I am so grateful, so grateful to all of the women who pushed and pressed and persevered even when they were told to get behind. It is their determination that is flowing through my blood and yours and your blood too. So we thank God for the women who said, I'm not going to let you hold me back. I'm coming up from behind. This woman, this woman in our text was behind first because of her position. Second, she was behind because of her problem. The Bible says that this woman had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. Now, if we just did a surface reading of the text, we would think that this was just a medical problem. She's bleeding, so her problem must be medical. But this was not just a medical problem, it was also a social problem. According to the law, a hemorrhaging woman was ritually unclean, and any person who came into contact with her would also be rendered unclean. This means that this woman could not touch or be touched by anyone. Not her husband, not her children, not her family, not her friends. The pastor couldn't even come and lay hands on her. This was a problem that cut her off completely from the people in her life. But not only did her problem cut her off from people, her problem also cut her off from God. So now not only is this a medical problem, not only is this a social problem, but pastor now it's a spiritual problem. Because she was considered unclean, this woman was prohibited from entering the temple, which means that she couldn't even worship. For 12 years, this woman had been dealing with a problem that had consumed her life to the point where it not only cut her off from her loved ones, but it also cut her off from God. But we can celebrate this woman in our text today because despite her problems, she pushes her way, presses her way, prays her way to Jesus. This woman was determined to not allow her problems to hold her back. She said, I'm coming up from behind. As we celebrate the determination of the woman in our text, can we also celebrate the women among us who also push their way, press their way, pray their way, despite the problems they are dealing with? Women have always had to find a way to make a way while balancing multiple problems in our lives. Do I have any witnesses in the house today who can testify that women have always had to make a way while also juggling all of the problems in their lives? personal problems, political problems, social problems, medical problems, money problems, marital problems, problems on our job, problems with our mental health, problems in the church, problems at home, other people's problems, our kids' problems, our husband's problems, our family's problems. Women have always had to balance multiple problems. We've had to find a way to keep on keeping on despite the fact that we had multiple problems going on. But today, we celebrate. We celebrate today because despite our problems, women have always been able to get up, dress up, do our makeup, 
and then show up like nothing happened. As a matter of fact, that's part of our gift. That's part of our genius, right? Right, right? Part of our gift is that we can be dealing with so much and still look so good. Family, can we celebrate the gifts of women who have determined that they are not going to allow their problems to hold them back? Can we celebrate the women who have decided, despite what I'm going through, I'm coming up from behind? These are the women, the women who show up to work every day. They're good at their job, and if the truth be told, the office couldn't run without them. Everyone thinks they're so strong. Everyone believes that they ain't got nothing going on. They think that they can handle anything. She looks so good on the outside, but they have no idea what you're going through on the inside. These are the women who press their way to work despite their problems because they got bills. To, to pay and, and mouths to feed. These are the women, the women who show up to church every Sunday. Some of the best supporters in the church are dealing with the most. They're the ones who are on the prayer call. They're at Bible study, prayer meetings. They support the youth. They come to the choir concerts. If the church needs someone to bake for the barbecue, they say yes. These women, despite their problems, give their time, give their money, give their resources to the church. We see them every Sunday. They look good every Sunday. We speak to them every Sunday, but we don't know their story. We don't know that they had to push their way, press their way, pray their way, despite the problems in their life. Can we take a moment to celebrate the women who said, listen, I may have problems, but my problems don't have me. I'm still going to get up. I'm still going to get dressed. I'm still going to show up. I'm coming up from behind. And even as I celebrate women like my grandmother, I watch my grandmother go to work in pain. Uh, I watch my grandmother press her way, push her way to church, push her way, pray her way to work. And even as I celebrate women like my grandmother who didn't allow the pain and the pressure and the strain and the stress to keep her home, I also celebrate the fact that there is a new way. It's a new day and there is a new way. There is a new paradigm and one that says, women, we no longer have to sacrifice our well-being, our self-care, our jobs for, for anyone, not our families, not our kids, not our husbands, not the church. We have problems. But listen, today, there are ways to solve them. We got Jesus, we got therapy, and we have massage envy, right? This woman, this woman in the text was behind. First, because of her position. Second, because of her problem. And the third and final reason she was behind was because of poverty. The text tells us that this woman spent all she had paying different doctors to cure her condition. But instead of getting better, she grew worse. So the reason this woman fell into poverty, the reason she was behind, was because she lacked the resources needed to fix her problem. Women have often found themselves behind in life simply because we haven't always had the resources we needed to get ahead. In the United States, uh, women, especially women of color, are more likely to live in poverty than men. Women hold 58% of all student loan debt. The average debt for a female student is 9.6% higher than their male peers one year after graduation. And the gender wage gap is still something that we have to contend with in 2022. Women earn 82 cents for every dollar a man earns, and the gap is even wider for women of color. How can we get ahead when it feels like 
we're starting behind. If you are asking this question, if you have been feeling the stress and strain of trying to get ahead, but finding that your lack of resources keep pulling you back, I have good news for you this morning. Here's the good news. We come from a long line of women who didn't always have the resources they needed, but they did not allow that to keep them behind. Black history and women's history is filled with people who did what they could with what they had and made it work. Women like Mary McLeod Bethune, who founded a school with only six students and a dollar fifty. That school is now Bethune Cookman University in Daytona Beach, Florida. Women like Madam C.J. Walker, who started a hair care line out of her house. Her first two employees were her husband and her daughter, and thank God for Madam C.J. Walker. I, 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 don't even have to, I don't even have to look in history. I can look at my mama. Growing up, we didn't always have enough money in the bank or food in the fridge or, or gas in the car, but my mama refused to allow our resources to keep us behind. On more than one occasion, I watched my mama make a way out of no way. I watched my mama make something out of nothing. I watched my mama make the impossible possible because black women that is what we do today we call it black girl magic because we have this way of, of taking the scraps that the world gives us and like magic we can turn it into something great can we take a moment to celebrate the gifts of women because only a black woman could take the scraps of the pig they were given and turn it into a southern delicacy. Only a black woman can make an apartment in the projects feel like a mansion on a hill. Only a black woman can take hot dogs and beans and make it feel like Thanksgiving dinner. Is there anybody in the house today who can say thank God for black women? Thank God for the gifts of black women being able to make a way where there was no way. Being able to take what looked impossible and make it possible. Are there any witnesses in the house today who watch their mama and their grandmama turn nothing into something. Are there any witnesses? We didn't always, we didn't always have the resources we needed. Oh, we look good now, but, but we didn't always have the resources that we needed. We didn't always have money in the bank, but we refused to allow poverty to keep us from our destiny. Let me tell you how dope my mom was. I didn't even know I was poor growing up. Look, look, looking back now, I'm like, man, we were poor, poor, but it didn't feel like it. It felt like we were the richest people in the world. Only a black woman can do that. We thank God for the gifts of women, the gifts of women to make ways where we look and see no ways and, and to take what seems like nothing and, and turn it into something. We, we celebrate all of the women who said, I, I'm not going to allow my lack of resources to keep me behind. I'm coming up from behind. Today, we celebrate this woman in our text who did not allow her position, her problems, or poverty to hold her back. The text says that she came up from behind and made her way to Jesus. 
breaking all kinds of protocol. Any rule breaking women in the house, breaking all kinds of protocol. This woman pressed her way to Jesus because Jesus did not see or treat women the same way society does. You see, when society dismisses us, denies us, disregards us, Jesus affirms us. All we have to do is look at his life and ministry. All throughout his ministry, Jesus celebrated the gifts of women, appreciated the gifts of women, and even elevated the gifts of women. This woman pressed her way because when society overlooked her, Jesus affirmed her. How many of you know that's good news? That when society overlooks us, Jesus affirms us. This is good news, not just for women, but for anyone who has ever been dismissed, denied, disregarded, and overlooked. Jesus does not see us or treat us the same way society does. That's good news, that's good news, that's good news for women, that's good news for black folks, that's good news for those who are differently able, that's good news for Latinos, good news for Asians, good news for Ukraine, that's good news for the less, the lost, the left out, and for the least of these. Jesus does not see us the same way society sees us. And family, what I have come from New Jersey to Charlotte to tell you is that if you want to come up from behind, make your way to Jesus. If you are feeling dismissed or denied, make your way to Jesus. Because in the presence of Jesus, our gifts are celebrated and our lives are validated. When this woman touched the hem of his garment, Jesus did not dismiss her, discard her, deny her. His response was, daughter, your faith has made you well. Jesus celebrates the gifts of women and we celebrate the gifts of women today. You know at that uh, women's rights convention, Sojourner Truth ended her speech, ain't I a woman with these words? She said, uh, that man back there he says that uh, women should not have the same rights as a man because Christ wasn't a woman. Well, I want to know, where did his Christ come from? Where did your Christ come from? from God and a woman. Man ain't have nothing to do with him. Now if the first woman that God ever created was strong enough to turn this whole world upside down all by herself. Then all these women here put together ought to be able to turn it right side up again. And you men better let them do it. Obliged to y'all for hearing me, but old Sojourner ain't got nothing more to say. Wow, what a powerful word from Reverend Maria Crumpton. Thank you, Pastor, for using your gifts. Thank you, viewers, for joining us today. Don't forget to hit the like button, and please remember to visit our C.N. Jenkins website, cnjenkins.org. Thank you, and may God continue to bless you.
Thank you again so much, uh, Pastor Cannon and Presbyterian Women, and to all of you for your hospitality. It has truly been my honor and my privilege to be here. Thank you to all of those who have been streaming online. Our church started at 930, so I, I hope that you all are going to make the transition to Elmwood um, in just a few moments. But I do thank God for all of you for your love and support. Let us receive our benediction. God, we are so grateful that in you our gifts are celebrated, our, our, our lives are validated, that you affirm us when we are in your presence, oh God. I thank you for each person here, for who they are, for all that they had to press and push and pray their way through to be here. God, I just ask, oh God, that you meet them where they are, meet their needs in the name of Jesus. Now, as we plan to leave this place, never from your sight, keep your hand on us until we meet again in the name of Jesus we pray and the people of God said amen amen, amen.